Sports Network, sponsored by the News of the World, Big Arm Boxing, and on the internet with www.frankwarren.tv, proudly present 10 three-minute rounds of boxing for the vacant Central Area Super Featherweight Championship. The officials have been appointed by the Central Area Council of the British Boxing Board of Control. Stuart in Chief's charge is Kevin Lee. Introducing to you firstly the boxers. Boxing out of the red corner wearing the black colour shorts trimmed with white. At the weigh-in yesterday he scaled nine down, two and a half pounds. His ring record reads 26 contests, 18 wins. Five of those wins coming by way of knockout, seven defeats and one draw. He comes to the ring this evening as the former featherweight champion of Great Britain presenting from Liverpool, Jamie McKeever. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing the black spangled shorts trimmed with white. At yesterday's win, he also scaled nine stone two and a half pounds. He has an excellent undefeated record, 12 contests, 10 wins, four of those wins coming by way of knockout with two draws. Presenting from Manchester, the undefeated Stephen Bell. Timekeeper at the bell, Mr. Andrew East from Warrington. And when the action commences, the star referee in charge of the action, Mr. Phil Edwards from Preston. 10 three minute rounds. Okay, gentlemen, you follow my instructions at all times. When I tell you to break, you break cleanly and take a step back. Watch those heads in close. Touch gloves to you both. Steve Bell, undefeated from Manchester, the taller man in the solid black shorts. But 31 years old, really needs to kick on with his career. Jamie McKeever from Birkenhead has the ring nickname Relentless. Not a big puncher, and if he's going to win this fight, Duke, Relentless, I suspect, is exactly what he's going to have to be. Well, he's, he's quite diminutive in stature, John, and he needs to get real close to Bell real quick if he's going to live up to his nickname. Otherwise, you would expect him to get out-jabbed and out-manoeuvred. That's a good, snappy left-hand lead from Bell, who earns a bit of money outside the ring working as a part-time actor. McKeever, incidentally, a former British featherweight champion, stopped Tony Mulholland in six rounds in 2003 at the Everton Park Leisure Centre, but then lost it in his first defence later that year against Coventry's Roy Rutherford. Well, Bell can fight at this pace all night long, John. He's not being pushed at all. You would expect McKeever just to back him up if, if he can, get closer to him if he can, and just get both hands working. But Bell, he's long, he's rangy. Nice you know, uppercut in there, Duke. Yeah, this is, this is his pace, this is the way he likes to fight. There is an argument that McKeever maybe has had too many tough fights over the years now, and his best might be behind him, although this clearly represents an opportunity for him. Last month he was beaten by Ryan Barrett on points. Barrett, a tall fighter like Steve Bell. And you'll remember, of course, that Ryan Barrett was blown away inside a round by Amir Khan. Well, McKeever is just throwing single punches and it, it just won't be enough. As early on in his first round, John, I'm telling you, it just will not be enough. Well, he's coming in, trying to wing in those hooks to the body. Good body shot from Bell. Well, 
Well, a few cheers from the local faithful for that shot from McKeever, but it was more of a slap than anything else. Bell is very upright, very, very, very long armed. Here's some of the action from the first round, Duke. Nice left hook from, from Bell, counter shot on the back foot. Little tidy uppercut. This is what he likes, John. He just places, you know, single punches at his own pace. Silly right hand swing, okay? Now and again, jab half a pace back, then change your direction. When you throw that little left uppercut, bang that right hand in straight away because you're lifting his head up and then whack that right hand straight through, all right? Cotton all, cotton all, cotton all. Words of advice from Dean Powell. Yeah. Okay. Try and close in instead, because he can't hit you inside. He's yeah. trying to throw little uppercuts and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Head from behind the jab. Second down. Second round of ten, this one, for the Central Area Super Featherweight Championship. And Steve Bell, the undefeated man from Manchester, the taller of the two fighters, in the black shorts. McKeever in the black and white shorts. Bell probably did enough to take the opening round. Yeah, he certainly did, John, and as, as I've already stated, he's, he lands with single shots, but every time he does land, he can't miss the target. There's not enough lateral movement from McKeever. He can't seem to close down the reach deficit quick enough to be and have any success. Plenty of local support for McKeever inside this atmospheric old venue. Support doesn't necessarily mean more once you get in there. No, it's not. You know, I mean, it will help him raise his game, John, if he's on top. But right now, he's just being outboxed. <laughs> Referee not to have to do too much so far tonight. Phil Edwards from Preston. Better work from McKeever, good left hand. He's had a bit of a history of fragile hands in the past, and he does cut as well. Well, that won't help him, John, in, in this fight if he's got fragile skin because, you know, he's stopping quite a lot of shots, a lot of single shots, quite flush. See, McKeever's... He's head hunting, you know, he's trying to hit the taller guy with head punches and he's not getting through. If he targets the body, John, then goes to the head, he might have some, a better chance. That's better from McKeever. McKeever uh, went in against the formidable Jackson Asiku from Uganda not too long back and was blown out in a round. Asiku is one of the avoided men of the division, I think it's fair to say. Just trying the right hand there, John. Didn't quite land with it. Not, not with any real significance. But McKeever needs to needs to get through to Bell quicker. He doesn't know where it's going to go. He doesn't know whether it's downstairs or upstairs. So you've got to keep prodding the jab and then take the hip shot, then the head, and then make, take 
the overhand right. Let that right hand go. Yeah. I'm telling you, put this, push this fella back, you'll get him out of here, yeah. okay? Now pick the pace up a little bit. Come on. Music, come on, that jump ball. You're going. Third of ten, not too much between them at this stage, we reckon, that maybe the cleaner work coming from the undefeated Stephen Bell and his cornermen, Anthony Farnell and Dean Powell, were saying, step it up, let's put the pressure on McKeever here and they could get a stoppage, and there's a good uppercut there from Bell, right on cue, good right hand. Well, he really needs to try and make a statement, John, if he's going to push for, for bigger honours. You know, if he can stop McKeever, then obviously the rest of the boxers in this weight division will have to start taking notice. The rest of the champions in this weight division will have to start taking notice. Bell, who had a very good amateur career, twice 3A's featherweight champion. Not quite been able to move over perhaps as impressively as some might have expected when he joined the professional ranks a little bit late in 2003 twice fought for England in the Commonwealth Games to Kuala Lumpur in 98 and then in 2002 in Manchester the good right hand there from Makiba twice he's landed with a, a sweeping right hand takes one back in return but now he just seems to be warming up just ever so slightly, John. Well, they call him relentless, and he's keeping coming forward, trying to wear Bell down. Former British featherweight champion, remember, he's been at this level and beyond before. doesn't seem to be enough urgency behind Bell's work which is very very systematic he just he kind of plods forward and hits one or two home runs and then stops it's better shot he'd like to see him get into the trenches a bit more I'd like to see him just be, you know, get at the races with this with this guy. He's got all of the physical attributes to really get to work, but he's not using them to good effect. That's a good right hand. Gets the shouts of acclaim from his corner, Steve Bell. There's not a lot between them. It's a, it's a much better round for McKeever, I think, John. Get your shield out, get your shield out. Back him up now, eh? You've got a little lump coming up here, it's nothing, OK? That's you don't know why that is? You're letting it off. When you used to get a jab out in his face, you can't. Well, this is a nice snappy double jab right hand there from, from Bell. But he just needs to really push McKeever back and keep him going down. back. Step in with a jab. Punch down with the right hand, OK? Because mm. you're punching straight, then it's going chop over it on, there. Chop, it, chop it down, and then when you, as soon as you've thrown the right hand, whip the left hook underneath. Not the left hook, not the left hook, left hook cut underneath, OK? Get in there, you've got yeah. to get in there. So let's do this, bro. Pump shield. OK, pump shield, bro. Jamie. Second down. Fourth round for the vacant central area title. And a few people might have thought that Stephen Bell would have a, a comfortable sort of night, the Mancunian boxing his way towards victory at range. Not quite working out that way because McKeever is starting to gain in confidence the further this fight is going and he's starting to enjoy more success as he gets inside trying to wing in those hooks. Well, McKeever must say to himself right now, you know, I'm not being hurt, OK, I'm being out work, but I'm not being hurt, it's time to take one or two chances get closer and really see if I can't rough this guy up. Take him out of his 
out of his safety zone, his comfort zone, John. He builds boxing in a very compact style. He's comfortable. So McKeever needs to really just, you know, try and bully him, really just push him back, get him to throw more punches, get him to open up, where he can land these swinging shots. Snappy right hand over the top there by, by Bell. Just starting to take some effect now on the keeper's right, left eye, sorry. Nice little one two there by, uh, by Bell. Just starting to put his punches together just a little bit better. Shortening the punches on the inside. A little bit of swelling and damage around the right eye of McKeever now. He's been speared a great deal by that left hand lead of Bell. The right eye starting to mark up as well. He Bell's putting a little two punch combination together to left uppercut right hand and that's what's doing the damage there's a right hand in there though from McKeever which Bell just caught pretty flush didn't see it yeah, Bell he's boxing well within within himself John McKeever just starting to get marked up around the face and will be getting disheartened seconds of the fourth round that one looked low right listen keep singing your shots together right yeah. when you're working that job job it's doing the job yeah do you understand me? And when you're going forward, it's doing the job because he can't fight and stuff. Put pack on his head. We shouldn't even know that. Okay? Yeah. Ian Johnston with the words of advice from Akiva. And there's that good left hand from Bell. The right eye really starting to mark up and they're having to work on that, Duke. McKeever looks very disorientated in that little exchange. Listen, mate. These rounds are do or die. When you when you move back, we will get that shot. Yeah, sure. Fifth round, and Jamie McKeever, the local lad from Birkenhead, is starting to mark up. His corner have said he's got to get in there and make these rounds do or die. Wise advice. Foolhardy advice. No, I don't know. It's wise advice, John. He's, you know, he's he's losing these rounds, obviously, so that means he's losing the fight. He's got to do something to turn this one around. But he, he's just waiting too long. The more he stands off Bell, the more Bell gets into that comfort zone, hits him with single shots, and that, that's how, just how he likes it. Anthony Farnell was saying to Stephen Bell, Throw that right hand, turn it over the top, that's the one which will take him. Good shot from McKeever. Well, he's fighting quite aggressively in this round, John. He's biting on his gum shield and trying to get some good power on them shots. Using, use, using full range of the ring, John, and that's why he's having the success that he's got, because he's, he's been able to get the leverage on these shots, because he's not getting closed down quick enough. 
Good right uppercut in there from Bell again. And the right over the top. And suddenly McKeever looks a little bit disorganised in there again. The right eye of McKeever, John, is really starting to close up. Yeah, it's looking a mess. It's them right hands over the top. But he's taking. He wants he, to... He's so, a very brave fighter, isn't he? He's got a lot of guts. He's shown that right the way through his career. Yeah. And he's having to show it again here tonight. He needs to keep Bell backed up now on the ropes if he can. And just let both hands go. few seconds of the fifth and it's been a pretty good round by and large for Bell I think the more of the quality work has come from him throughout McKeever pretty much on the receiving end okay he hasn't caught it with no good shot there. No. Honest, yeah. Well, they're telling him he didn't catch him with any good shots. McKeever caught Bell with one decent one there. Bell had his own moments, right hand missing, but there were a few decent shots from Bell which did get through. There's a good straight right hand. And then followed up with the body attack. Yeah, it would appear that Bell has the final say Clear in every exchange now. they have, John, have a look at what he's in doing. control. Just throw everything in just like, because you want to throw it. Throw it because you bloody mean it. Yeah. Okay? We mean it. Oh, we've got to drain this guy to win this fight. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. we've got to drain him. Okay. Jammer, he's tired of. Second down, round six. Starting to become a gruelling fight, this one. Test of ambition, endurance, as well as skill and strength. Good left hand from McKeever. Bringing out the gum shield of Bell. Oh no, it's not, I tell you, beg, beg your pardon, it's brought out the gum shield of McKeever. A little bit of marking under the right eye of Bell now as well. Graze more than a cut. Bell could do with some more of them Trademark left uppercuts that he throws, John, and and the right hands. You know, some combination punches would be nice from him. See, McKeever, try as he may, he just can't seem to get through with any more than a single shot at a time. Wild left hook. Just needs to close down the range and drop the left hook. Neither of these lads has big single punch knockout power though, do they? No, absolutely not. You know, it would look like Bell if, would be the one of the two if there was going to be a stoppage. He could probably gain it if he ups his work rate. But McKeever just keeps on coming. It all depends what the referee's looking at, you know, I mean, McKeever is the one who's trying to force the pace, although now missing rather wildly. That's because he's getting tired now, John, his pace has dropped. And believe it or not, you know, when you're actually taking shots, taking clean punches, they tire you out. Not only mentally, but physically, they tire you out. I'll tell you something, it's even more tiring than that, John. Hitting thin air. When, when Makiba hits thin air, it just tires you out. Well, he's done plenty of that in this round. Plenty of wild hooks aimed at the head of Bell, which have just whistled through the air. Quite chilly air, I might say, in this arena. In Makiba, he's, he's tired now, John. So if, 
if you know every face tells a story if Bell is reading what's in Makiba's eyes and you know he should know now to step on the gas and really push this boy got too much left John except ambition and heart listen you're making it hard okay yeah. you're making an easy night's work hard okay? don't let him get into a fucking river push him back right Bella, you He's going, he was going after the first two rounds, like when you were putting them together, put them together, what your balls are, you're going to be knackered tonight. We're knackered. When you're inside, you're doing good, and that's what you got to think of, you got to stay close. Listen to me, I'm not going to let him take too much, okay? You're taking all the shots, okay? Hey, right? listen, if listen. You, if you can't get into it, okay? Have a, have a look at him at times, with his elbows fella. and pushing down. Okay, okay. Alright. Right, listen, he's tired, yeah. right? Okay. You don't want to take any more, right? right? So we're going to give it. Okay. You can give it. Okay. When you see shots coming, right? Don't be shy to get your own off. Okay. You've got to be on his chest, James. You know that, don't you? Take it down. Round seven. Seventh round and referee Phil Edwards, an experienced man, the custodian tonight. He is the one who has said between the rounds to Jamie McKeever, you can't take too much more. He's going to be taking a close look at this. He thinks he's being hit too much. And certainly McKeever was looking very, very tired and groggy sitting in his own corner. I'll tell you what, John, that's a really good referee. Obviously, the boxer's help is, is imperative and paramount to, to, you know, to his own health and safety, and this referee's doing a fine job. Well, Jamie McKeever's had a lot of hard fights over the years. Brave man, but sometimes, sometimes fighters, as we saw not too long back with Graham Earl, sometimes fighters have to be protected from their own bravery. Absolutely. You can expect maybe a, a big charge now from McKeever, no. having having realised that the referee said to him, you know, maybe this might be your last round. So you'd expect him now to really just, you know, go go just go at Bell. Well, maybe it's pretty much one-way traffic, though, isn't it? There's not a deal coming back from McKeever at this stage. He's bravely keeping trying to throw shots, but there, one, two, bang into the side of his head with that. Classy looking right hand and another one from Bell and another. The referee will be having a look if before too long if, if that sort of punishment continues. Another one, that's four clean right hands. I think the referee's pretty much poised, John, to jump in, as you've already stated. Bell grounding confidence by the second. I think if he could put together one sort of sustained attack here, this might be it. The referee's having a close look. But McKeever manages to get himself away off the ropes and the action goes on. I'd like to see this one stop now, John. It's been one-sided for a couple of rounds and you know, McKeever's not winning the fight. He's just taking, you know, probably unnecessary punishment right now. Oh, he's taking a pasting now. And he's not throwing the right hand at him. He might have hurt his right hand, John. Look how low he's carrying it. Yeah. I think he gets pulled out at the end of this round, John, even if he gets to the end. He's hurt that right hand. Uh, McKeever now is just trying to be as elusive as possible, trying to throw the right and the left hand. Nothing coming off the right quarter. As Duke was saying, could be that he's damaged that right hand. And it's been all Stephen Bell here in this round. And the fight's all over. The referee stopped him. Stoppage in the closing seconds of the round. And I think that was absolutely right. Absolutely good call by the referee. N not a moment too soon. Obviously, McKeever was in distress with that shoulder or, or the hand. I'm not sure which, where the problem lies. But he, he wasn't winning the fight anyway. So Stephen Bell continues his victory run. 
There were those big right hands which caused the damage throughout that round. He must have thrown seven or eight real solid power shots. There's a good left hand as well from Bell, who by this stage was landing almost at will. Another right hand. Bell moving on to victory number 11, 31 years old, but undefeated now in 13 professional fights. And we will get confirmation of the results from Master of Ceremonies, Michael Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 56 seconds of round number seven, referee Phil Edwards has called a halt to the contest. In his opinion, Jamie McKeever was unable to continue your winner. And he is the new Central Area Super Featherweight Champion from Manchester, Stephen Bell. You appreciate it, please, for your very own Jamie McKeever. Yeah, we got Harsh, we'll get it on the floor. Well done. First pro belt. How does that one uh, feel around you? Oh, it feels beautiful. Last time I won a title was 10 years ago. Nearly to the day was my first amateur title. Now, 10 years later, I'm still at it, fully strong. I'm fresh, absolutely fresh. I was prepared to do 10. I was ready to do 10. But, you know, Jamie McKeever, good kid, very good kid, strong. And he's been around a long time. I've got a lot of respect for Jamie. He stayed there till the death. And uh, I'll take me off to him. You're 31. What's the target? Realistically, what's the target? Well, I'm a fresh 31, I didn't turn pro till I was 27, so, you know, I've got a good five years in me. I do believe that I've only just come, you know, to me best of form. Uh, I'm looking next to hopefully go for an intercontinental title. Hopefully Dean can, uh, can get me that and Frank. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just looking to be pushed, really. I'm hoping to, to go to the top of the Super Featherweight Tower. Um, I've been here a long time and it's about time that I won this and hopefully uh, many more will come my way. The first step? First step, yeah, and I've just got to say a big, big, massive thank you to this fella here next to me, Arnie, for getting me, uh, for getting me ready for this. I mean, I was with, I've been with Arnie for a year now, and it's all down to me training and preparation. Uh, big thank you to him, and uh, a, a massive thanks to my wife who smart through text all the stick for going in there. So, so less acting, more boxing. I hope so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not ready to finish the boxing yet. You know, I want to, I want to achieve something, and you know, I'm, I'm a stubborn get. Until I get what I achieve, you know, I won't stop, and that's what I want. I want to get the bigger titles. Well done tonight. Thank you very Thanks, much. God bless. Um, I think Paul's chasing it here, but it just sort of went away. So, in my right ear, you're fine in the left, but the right earpiece just went. 
Good evening, welcome to the big fun. It's a wonderful old arena originally built. The housing is right. It's a different type of world to enjoy. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do that recording now, when Watsy? I don't, it, it's up to you, mate. I mean, you can tell it there. I don't know. I mean, I can, you know, if you want to record those first two paras now, I mean, I can. Um, okay.
Oh, 